Hey guys, welcome to the first lesson on WCF using C Sharp. This video is just so that you guys can get your computer set up for the rest of the videos coming in this series. Um, for most of the videos in the series, we're going to be using um, a database to get information from from when we uh, use WCF. So I'm going to be in the videos. I'm going to be using MySQL database. So in this video, I'm just going to be showing you what you need to download and install and what database we're going to be using. We're going to be using this database called AdventureWorks. And basically, it's a sample database that just has some basic information that we can use to, to mess around with when we're writing applications. Um, I'm pretty sure that the database is based off of some kind of um, bicycle shop or something. I forget. Um, I don't know. We'll look at it more, but yeah, it's a sample database that's really popular in most textbooks that are that use databases because it has a lot of good data that we can use to create applications that are realistic. So the first thing that you need to install is this MySQL installer. The MySQL installer is basically a package that allows you to go and download other things that you'll need. So you want to download this first. Um, once you once this is downloaded, then you go ahead and open it. We're going to have to download three things from here, and I'll show you it um, in a second when I open mine. But basically, we're going to want to download the MySQL server, and that basically is a database server. This allows us to, it basically, it's a, a service that runs in the background of your computer, and it, um, it basically hosts the database so that we can access it through you know maybe different com on different computers or um, through applications and stuff like that and basically if you don't know what a database is a database is just think of Excel that is hosted online so that we can access that data it's basically a way to store data in, in a rows and columns kind of situation um, we're also going to need MySQL connector which um, deals actually you need MySQL connector for .NET framework I'll show you for that and then we also need MySQL MySQL for Visual Studio um, the reason why we need MySQL for Visual Studio and MySQL connectors is because it used to back in the day MySQL used to have them both into one package but recently I'm pretty sure in in Visual Studio 2013 they split them up for some reason and MySQL for Visual Studio is now used for getting the MySQL connector to show up in your list in Visual Studio so that we can use a MySQL connection rather than using Microsoft uh, SQL uh, server so because by default Visual Studio doesn't have support for MySQL so we have to download this to get that support that we want because we're going to be using uh, ADO.net, which I'll be explaining in later videos. So we need that. We need MySQL connector for .NET and MySQL server. So basically, when you um, download MySQL connector, it's going to look something like this. Mine may look slightly different because I already have it installed, and this is just the update kind of screen. But basically, you're going to go into this kind of type of screen, and this is where you're going to select what you want to install. So you're going to want MySQL server. This is, you're going to want to check that entire thing. You want that. Then inside of applications, you're going to want to, like I said, uh, click MySQL for Visual Studio. That's what you want. And then in MySQL connectors, you're going to want to click connector for net or the .NET framework. So those are the three things that you're going to want for MySQL installer. That one, that one and all of MySQL server. Then once you select those, you're just going to go hit next um, and download them. When you download the MySQL server, however, you're going to then go through a configuration to configure your server. And basically, um, you can leave all the settings to default. Um, you might want to, you could turn off, you know, starting up the server on startup of a computer. You could change, uh, change things like that. But one thing that you're going to have to set is your root password and your or I mean your your uh, password for the server. I don't think it's not the root password. Um, so yeah, you need to set the the password for the server, and you could pick whatever kind of password you want. But make sure you remember that password. It's very important that you remember that because we're going to need that password to to um, set up the database and also connect to it in our applications. So make sure you remember that password. Once you set that all up, you hit next, 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 continue, whatever you have to hit. 
and then you're good to go. Once it's done, it's going to be running in the background. You're not going to see something pop up saying MySQL Server running. Um, it's going to be running in the background. And in order to see if it's running, you can go into your task manager like this, go to your services pages, and for example, mine is called MySQL 56. So I can see that my MySQL server is running in the background. I can stop it here or do whatever I want. So that, that's all that's going to be happening. It's a Windows service. So you're not going to see an actual application pop up. Okay. Once you guys have that installed, the next thing you want to install, or I mean download, is we want to download the database that we'll be using. So we're using AdventureWorks database. So we need to download the AdventureWorks.sql database. So this is the link to that database. I'm going to be posting the links in the comments below. So be sure to check those out for both links. But this is the link for that, and you're going to go to AdventureWorks, see Adventures Work, AdventureWorks database for MySQL. This is exactly what we need. You're going to go hit uh, download right here. You'll download it, and then you have your AdventureWorks database. Save it to somewhere that you can access easily, maybe your desktop, because we're going to now need to import this into, um, or I mean, uh, add it, add it to our database server. Okay, so once it's downloaded, like I said, you'll have it maybe saved to your desktop or something like that, and that, that will be a good spot for it. So right now, I save it to my desktop. Now that we have this SQL file, we, like I said, we need to add it to our server as a table, or I mean as a database connection. So um, there's a couple of ways we can do this. I am assuming that none of you guys are really too familiar with databases. I mean, if you are, that's fine. Um, you, there are there is software out there that it's graphical that you can interact with your MySQL server and add SQL files and and look at that and I'll show you what that looks like here in a second, but I'm gonna assume that you guys don't have software like that. So in order to get this into the server, what we have to do is we have to first open up the MySQL command prompt and you could just do a search for that in your um, search little bar if you're running Windows 8 it's it comes up easily I don't know it should come up easy for Windows 7 for any OS so let me go ahead and open that so MySQL command line client this is what you need to open so you just type in MySQL command and then it should come up once this is open you're gonna type in the password that you set while you were configuring the the server so you type in whatever password you had and then you hit enter once you did that, once you did that, now you're logged in to the server, and you can um, do anything you want with it. But we're our job is to we need, just need to um, add the SQL file into the database. So the command that you're going to type for this is source space, and then the wherever your um, SQL file that you just downloaded is located. So for me, uh, it's going to be located. Um, on my desktop, so I'm just gonna type this path C users Jesse desktop, and then my file is called aw backup.sql. So I would just press enter on this right now, and I'm not gonna do it because I already have it in my database and it's gonna say everything is already exists and it's gonna error. But yeah, so you're just gonna hit enter on this command, and then it's gonna start loading all the file all the data into the database it's gonna take probably like five minutes so just let it go and it will do everything it needs to do once it's done you'll see a little MySQL print that comes up saying that you can type again and then that means you're done and then it's inside of your database and then you're done right now with this video once you finish that then you don't need to do anything else until the next video where we'll start actually using WCF and this database but then that if you if that successfully works if this source command successfully works for you that means that you're set up and you're ready for the rest of the stuff um, granted th that with your Visual Studio you have WCF stuff installed which you should um, if not we'll be able to work through that later so the last thing I want to show you is like I was saying that there's software that basically um, is designed with a graphical interface to interact with databases. More specifically, I have this program called NaviCat, and NaviCat, this is set up that I can interact with um, my SQL database. If I hit new database, I can create a new da database or do whatever I want here. 
Um, I also can create a new connection to a server. So we we can see that MySQL server is what my connection to localhost is right here. So as you can see in my localhost host connection, this is what yours probably looks like behind the scenes, but you just can't see it because it's a service behind the scenes. But this program allows me to see what the MySQL server looks like. So here I can see that my adventure workers database looks like this. This is what it looks like. Um, you should have this if you executed that command successfully like I did before. Um, and basically this is the database. It has these tables of information that we'll be using throughout the series to, to do tasks. Um, for example, let's open up a table called product. Oops, that's big. Hold on. So this is what a database looks like. I mean, a table at, at least. And basically, as you can see, there's rows and columns. The columns are um, information. So we have a product ID, a name, product number, make flag, finished goods flags, color safety stock level reorder point so these are just types of data um, that we have so our product ID in this specific table the product table is designed to show all the products that that on um, this company sells or has so a product ID in this case is a primary key meaning that each product ID is unique and because of that characteristic we can use that to connect it to other tables to get more data which we'll look at in a little bit, I mean in the next video. Um, so yeah, this is what it looks like. We have these and the rows are each individual instance. Um, and basically this is what a database is. It's some kind of program that runs behind the scenes that hosts data for us that can be accessed anywhere in the world. And our programs can use this data to to store things that we need. So um, we'll, like I said, we'll be, be we'll, uh, we'll be creating programs that utilize this data, um, and even more than just utilizing this data. Because if we were just using utilizing this data, that would be kind of a database video series, which is perfectly fine. But we're doing a WCF, um, which stands for Windows Communication Foundation, and I'll explain what that means in the next video. But basically, WCF allows us to create server application architecture. So we can create servers and clients, or services and clients. And basically, I personally think WCF is very important to know because creating clients and servers is basically what all modern applications do these days. I mean, any application that you download, Skype, I don't know. Um, I don't know. It's, there's TeamViewer. There's so many programs out there, and all of them... Well, most of them for, I mean, obviously like graphical programs like Photoshop, you know, don't really do this, but most programs interact with other clients like Skype, for example. You can talk to other people through messaging and things like that, and that's because you're contacting a server or a service, and that service is forwarding your message to other clients and, and stuff like that, and that's what we're going to be dealing with. We're going to be dealing with WCF. But we need databases to, on the side to store memory when the server is down. Or, for example, someone registers a new account, for a, so a username and a password. Well, if the server is not running or the server is down, where is that going to be stored, that username and password? Well, it gets stored into a database. Um, and things like that. That's what we'll be messing with. Um, yeah, so throughout the, these videos in WCF, we're going to be doing some really cool examples. The first one, we're going to be looking at just pulling information from a database, understanding what servers are about, are, are about and talking about some vocabulary that you need for WCF. Um, but then we're going to get into some cool things. Like I'm going to, like pretty quickly into the video series, I want to make a video on, you know, creating a login program. So creating that, that basic interface where you can type in a username and password and try to log into something. Obviously, it's not going to log into anything yet. It will just be the, the kind of like the interface for it where you can log in and then it would be like, okay, you successfully logged in. But that will go to the server. The server will access the database saying, is this the correct information? If it is, tell the client you can log in and go ahead. So we'll do something like that. Then eventually down the road we'll make some kind of chatting application where you can have a friends list and um, 
and talk to people and things like that. That's a little bit further down. And then in between that, we'll be doing some all kind of cool applications, cool kind of examples, learning WCF. WCF is one of my favorite topics, so I'm really excited to be able to make these videos. And I hope you guys all appreciate it too. Like I said, I think WCF is extremely important. I mean, WCF is kind of like exclusive to Microsoft, and it's kind of an an easy way to create web services. But web services in itself are existent everywhere. Every every anything can create web services. For example, I want to create an app. Uh, uh, let's say an iPhone app or something that utilizes Amazon's information, utilizes their database of information, meaning the products that they're selling on their website and things like that. How would I do that? Basically, Amazon is a, co a big company, so they have um, a web service or an API that is free, or not free, but it's open to people to use. Obviously, you have to pay money to use it, but it's open to people to use, and basically, we can write applications that tap into their web service and then their web service queries their database and sends the information back to us. That's what we're creating here, but we're doing it on our own stuff. In that kind of situation, the Amazon owns the server and we own the client. And because of that, how we build the applications will be different, but um, it's basically the same exact thing. So I'm kind of getting too far into this. Um, this video, is, like I said, is just for setting you up for... MySQL and the database. So, if you followed my steps, you should be set up and ready to go. Um, yeah, and thanks for watching.